Láčo divé, Steven Bachtale, Savore, my máme většina Petra Gelbar, my ulilom André Československo, André pro, pro Čechy, kanáme jsme z Dešber Šengry, my ulilom Mira Familiáha, André Amerika, u Kirava z André školy, a daj, u Napalutní škola, ale my míří, my máme najúči škola has o Harvard, o doktorátos Andalo Harvard, mé kerďom etnomuzikologia, palistiš kerďom muzikoterapia, prober univerzita a kana kera vůd různé buťa. My name is Petra Gelbard, I was born in the Czech Republic. I came with my family to the United States when I was 10 and I've attended many different schools here. My highest level of education was my doctorate, my PhD from Harvard University. I also actually went back and got a master's in music psychotherapy after that. So now I do various different jobs related to those different things. If you take two groups that are as different as various subgroups of Roma in Eastern Europe, and you know, we have really huge differences between us in that region. And then you take the Calé or the Gitanos as they're normally called in Spain. So it's it's a lot like Ashkenazi Jews and Sephardic Jews. I would say even more. I mean I, I think in, in most ways we actually have more differences between the Romani subgroups, just some really fundamental differences. So it's like that with, with Roma and Sinti and Manush and Hitanos. You know, we have a common history, co a common language or set of languages, but a lot of differences. But certainly there's wonderful political things that happen and sometimes through music where we really come together and we kind of decide we, we want to, you know, be united as a nation without a territory. Who all have origins in India, who all historically spoke the Romani language. So that's what ties us together. The most intellectually honest thing to do is is to provide context for that just to make sure you're capitalizing the gypsy make sure you're also using the other words and to really explain the number one thing that people don't understand in this context of interfacing with western classical music is that roma are an ethnic group and not a lifestyle and not so, just something that you can put on a halloween costume and pretend you're romani romani music comes from actual people and those people live in your city, they live in your country, they actually live among you, but the stigma is so high that most of them don't even want to tell you that they're Roma. And you can change that by showing that you have a more sophisticated understanding of our people than just the stereotype. In a website, it's www.romarchive.eu. <laughs> That's in itself an important message because that is a place where it's like this one-stop showcase of so much of the diversity that our people have to offer, you know, culturally, historically, artistically. Spain is a particular case because, you know, historically, to the best of our knowledge, you know, flamenco, which is this huge national treasure for Spain, really was primarily developed by many people. In Eastern Europe, we don't quite have an analogous. It's a little bit more complicated. There's definitely a lot of influence that Roma have had as musicians. In all areas, you have the Roma, the Jews, the Arab influence, the Spanish, is like all these things coming together. In our actual culture, it's perfectly acceptable, desirable even for women and men to cry, to be moved to tears by music all the time. It's one of the things I, I love singing for Romani audiences because they cry. <laughs> Because I know, I can see physically that I'm moving them, you know, and the non romani audiences don't do that. And I think there's, I mean, it's a cultural thing, but there is like a barrier. It's, it's not cool to cry. It's not cool to have that kind of emotional expression and that kind of emotional reaction. And my people don't have that issue. Thank you.
When asked to collaborate in this series of multidisciplinary performances, Diane Fellows remembered footage that she had shot in 2005 during a trip to Germany. She filmed a Romani activist woman singing as a sign of protest in front of the Holocaust Memorial in Berlin. She used this footage as the basis of the short film that you are going to watch. 
16 years later, Diana Fellows accidentally meets again the same woman in this online conversation. It turns out that Petra Galbert was that woman. From the distance, because I started filming and we can hear you, and then all of a sudden see you, your voice, that very strong presence at the memorial, necessary presence, was very, very powerful. Your voice has been with me, you know, as when you're there, there were so many people that particular afternoon. I, I was really just walking through and trying not to be too conspicuous, and uh, but your voice has been with me all of this time. I wanted to give it its place and when Ricardo contacted me your voice was right there. It was one of the loneliest things I've ever done. I was there from morning until late afternoon, just singing and singing and singing. It was just something that I felt I had to do, but it never occurred to me that it would have any impact beyond just that one moment. I was present when they brought the gypsies one night for burning, for poisoning. It was a terrible sight. There were cries to the sky. The general anti-Roma sentiments throughout the country in the early 90s. I was 14 and I could not understand why people in the gas chamber had so much hatred against us to the point that they wanted to see us killed, me and my whole family. I stopped going to school that week for fear that something bad could happen to me. When I started going back to school, I was asking myself if some of their parents were part of the attackers because the police started no investigation on the matter. Similar but more aggressive attacks in Kogalichano <coughs> left some of my relatives without a house. They had to flee in various cities in the country for months before they returned and discovered their houses burned down and dis were destroyed. Thank you. 
Thank you. 